7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We are here for Hour 2 of Talk of the Town. We are live on location this morning at the Greenville Convention Center. And uh, the exhibitors are getting ready. Good morning, exhibitors. How's everybody doing? They're getting ready for the uh, 2018 Business to Business Expo, which the Greenville Chamber of Commerce sponsors every year. And it starts in uh, uh, 55 minutes. Doors will open in 55 minutes to the expo. And it looks great, as always, here. Got a huge a bunch of exhibitors. Going to talk to some chamber guys about that in a minute. In this hour, Linda McMahon is going to be with us. We are still hopeful that she might walk over from the Hilton, but again, we're told she's got a Facebook Live national broadcast some point this morning, so she, they're concerned about her getting back in time for that, but uh, she is going to at least be on the phone with us. Linda McMahon, of course, who is uh, the uh, uh, administrator for the Small Business Administration and the Trump Administration, and she is the keynote speaker. She's an ECU alum, and she's the keynote speaker. Uh, at tonight's uh, commencement ceremonies. And so we're excited about having Linda McMahon. She's also Vince McMahon's wife. But I, I don't think I can introduce her that way. That would not be appropriate, would it? No. No. And I shouldn't say something like, can you smell what the rock is cooking? No, I won't do that. Please don't do Trent that. Trent McGee is here. Morning, McGee. Good morning, Ed. How are you? Trent, of course, Good. Uh, is uh, his full-time gig is with the Chamber of Commerce. we got your boss over here. We're going to talk to him in a minute. But this is... Uh, I'm sure it's all hands on deck with the Chamber putting this together. This is one of the big events the Chamber does every year. Yeah, it's perhaps the biggest event we do throughout the year. It's the one event where all of our members who are small businesses, and, and for that, I mean, larger businesses too, not all small businesses, but for all small businesses, are together under one roof, and it really gives the community a chance to network with so many different kinds of businesses. It really gives our members a chance to put what they have, their products and services on display throughout the day, so it's a great day. Uh, and yeah, you're right, all hands on deck for sure. Uh, and uh, Mark Gentner from WITN will have some news headlines for us in a minute. And WITN is one of the proud sponsors of the event. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys have a booth over there? Yep, we do it every year. Will Matt Engelbrecht be signing autographs and uh, 8x10 glossies today? I don't think he's still recovered <laughs> from his uh, ride in the jet. Oh, that's right. I saw that this uh, yeah, morning. Because <laughs> you, you got the air show, barbecue fest. We got a bunch of things going on. Are you guys so sponsoring the air show? Uh, we are one of them, yep. Yeah, okay, good. So that goes on. That's starting today in Havelock as well, starting tonight. All right, let's leave, uh, bring Leo Corbin in. Leo is the um, uh, executive director, uh, president. What's your title? President. President of the uh, Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, Leo. Good morning, Henry. How are you? Uh, thanks for having us again this year. We're excited about being a part of this and our Greenville Community Summit coming up later today, which we'll talk about. But let's talk about this great event. This is, uh, this is something the whole community can enjoy and come out and network and meet people. Had a great event in here last night. Talk about this event for the Chamber. Absolutely. First, uh, thank, thanks for uh, being part of it, Henry. Every year we look forward to, to you and your team in here. But last night we had a little preview party, so all the vendors, as they set up, they hung around for a little bit of networking and uh, interactions. And we have about 125 different uh, booths and vendors in and so it was a chance for these business people to uh, get together and and understand a little bit about what each of them do you know, today the general public of course will be in and they'll be sharing their goods and products and services uh, helping the, just everyone understand what the individuals do but last night was a time where the uh, different businesses could come together and spend some time and uh, just network uh, Leo, you and I have been around Greenville a few years, and we've seen a lot of change in Greenville, but uh, Greenville's booming. I mean, we are so fortunate to have uh, the great things happening in our community that are happening, and uh, we've got, uh, I, I will have to say the Chamber's been a big part of that. We've got an award, a national award-winning Chamber of Commerce here, great leadership for many years, including yourself, and so uh, there's a lot to celebrate in Greenville. Thank you, Henry. There certainly is. And you look across the board. It's not just Greenville, but Pitt County. Greenville, Pitt County Chamber of Commerce. And all all throughout our county, we, we were, we're seeing successes. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm one. I have a great team of people that make it make it work for the chamber. And we try to make it work for all the different businesses. And, uh, 
like you said, you, I would challenge anyone to drive down almost any street in Greenville, Pitt County, and not see some si sign of progress. It's just exciting, exciting times. It is. Uh, good times. And, of course, coming out of the recession, uh, there was a sense that Greenville was kind of ready to explode. And, and that's kind of what's happened, isn't it? It sure is. You know, we have a lot of just really good leadership throughout the uh, county. You know, if you look at city council, you look at the mayor, you look at, uh, we welcomed Ann Wall as, as city manager, the county commissioners, um, all the other uh, smaller uh, communities, you know, their leadership in those communities, you're seeing great things over in Farmville and, and uh, Aden and Winterville. It's just an exciting time. Yeah. I feel really good about the leadership right now. I know you do too. We've got a very business minded uh, uh, group of politicians now that are leading the community. And, uh, great folks like Greg Murphy we had here this morning, P.J. Conley, our mayor, who's going to be here uh, later today. You mentioned Ann Wall. I think this might be Ann's. She's going to be on the 10 o'clock panel discussion this morning. I believe this might be Ann's first public appearance because she doesn't like to do it. I, I had to twist her arm to do this one. I'm like, uh, Ann, you'll enjoy this, and it'll be an opportunity for people to meet you. And uh, she's, a, you know, she's very much a behind-the-scenes administrator. And she says, no, the elected officials are supposed to be the ones out front, not me. I said, no, you got to do this one. Yeah. So she, she's going to be here at 10 o'clock. I'm excited about that. I am, too. She, she's, she's really, really good, got a lot of energy, new ideas and old ideas. But uh, she's, she works well with her team. She works well with, across the community with other leaders to, uh, to help get things done. Yeah. Leo Corbin, the uh, president of the Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce. Leo, thank you for all the hard work and uh, you and your staff have put together for this great event here today. Uh, 9 to 1.30, I believe, and uh, it will be open to anyone and everybody. Come on out today. Uh, that's correct. 9, 9 to 1.30, please, please come out. And as you're out here, uh, something that we've added, there's a couple business breakout sessions. So if you want to learn how to rebrand your business or take it to the next level or uh, you want to start a business and want to better understand how to get licenses or permitting or that type of thing, we'll have some breakout sessions that people... Now, what time do those take place and where uh, are they? In the back on the, some of the a, side rooms? There's a side room and we'll do uh, one an hour uh, starting at, at the 9 o'clock hour is branding and then I think 10 o'clock is take your business to the next level. Uh, 11 o'clock, there's uh, Jackie Listecki who will be leading people through either how to get the best value out of your chamber membership or if you want to consider being a chamber member, she can help you there. And then uh, we're going to wrap up with the City uh, Economics Development Office to working through permitting and licenses. All right, great. Leo Corbin, thank you, Leo. Good thank luck you, today. Thank you. And, of course, uh, our Greenville Community Summit will begin at 10 o'clock this morning. And I mentioned earlier we got three sessions today, a 10 o'clock panel, 11 o'clock panel, and a noon panel. We're going to talk about the economy, the, uh, the issues surrounding crime and public safety in the 11 o'clock hour, and then in the uh, 12 o'clock hour. We're going to take a look at the future of the community and where we're going from there. 13 after 8, let's get a quick break in. We're live on location at the Greenville Convention Center. It is Talk of the Town Friday, and a lot to get to, including our exclusive interview coming up with Linda McMahon, who is in town for the big event tonight, the uh, graduation. All that and more from the Convention Center this morning. Stay with us. Be right back. All right, back at the Convention Center at 17 minutes after 8 o'clock. It's Talk of the Town on location on 103.7 and 94.1 today. Welcome into the show. 17 minutes after, uh, the uh, Convention Center will open to the public at 9. And uh, just, what is that, 43 minutes? And you'll have an opportunity to come in and uh, be a part of today's Greenville Business to Business Expo. Now, I was just in contact with Linda McMahon's uh, folks next door she is in town staying at the hilton and we're trying to get her to come over here but we're going to get her on the phone at least yeah you know it's not like it's not like you and me we can't just get up and uh, run into the uh run run next door you know uh, you got to put on the face and the whole deal yep she's so got we'll other obligations. May, but we we may get her we may not get her but we're going to get her one way or the other either on the phone or or in person let's check some news headlines right now and uh, mark gentner standing by from witn now the very latest good morning mark good morning henry good morning everyone a ceremony for fallen officers was held in the east thursday 33rd annual peace officers memorial day ceremony was held in wilson to remember fallen officers in north carolina 
during the event, an officer from each department that lost an officer placed a flag near the stage for that person. In 2017, North Carolina had five officers die in the line of duty. One officer from Goldsboro Police Department and four from the North Carolina Department of Corrections lost their lives while serving. Officials tell us the event is not about individual agencies, but rather for their families of the lost officers. The North Carolina Attorney General led the event. Governor Roy Cooper says he's preparing and maintaining North Carolina's workforce is one of his top priorities. The governor visited the Havelock campus of Craven Community College sharing his ideas for an NC Job Ready Fund. He toured some of the school's technical trade classes saying our workforce needs a variety of skilled people. Cooper wants $60 million for three facets of the program that aims to provide fiscal assistance to college students who are at risk of dropping out due to financial struggles. Cooper says, in quote, education is becoming unaffordable for a lot of middle class families in North Carolina. We need to make sure that the people get the education and training they need to have good paying jobs, end quote. Governor says he plans to share his proposed plan with the legislature when they reconvene later this month. Early voting for this month's primary election ends Saturday, May 5th. Voters from across the state will go to the polls to elect state legislators, sheriffs, district attorneys, and other officials. Winners in the May 8th primary will then face off against each other in the general election on November 6th. Early voting, also called one-stop absentee voting, continues until Saturday. Counties have at least one early voting location open during that period. The State Board of Elections says you can also update your name or address if needed. People not registered to vote can also do this during early voting. During same-day registration, people wanting to register must provide proof of residence. Proof of address documents include a North Carolina driver's license or other government-issued photo ID or a copy of current utility bill, bank statement, paycheck, government check, or other government documents showing the voter's name and address. They can then vote in the election that day. To find early voting location hours for your county, we have provided a link at WITN.com. And finally, thousands of graduates will walk across the stage at ECU's Dowdy Ficklin Stadium tonight. Spring commencement is being held at 7 p.m., complete with new fireworks show this year. Traffic is expected to be heavy in areas surrounding the campus all day Friday, and the ECU Police Department is asking for your patience as thousands of families head to Greenville to celebrate with their graduates. You can find more information on our website about the commencement at WITN.com. That's your WITN News Update. Back to you, Henry. Okay, let's check the, uh, let's check the weather now, and McGee has a look at the weather. Then I'm going to give you the boating forecast for the weekend. It might not be too bad to go out on the boat. What's no, it should be a great day today, too. 65 degrees right now, going to a high of 87 degrees. Plenty of sunshine on tap for today. Tonight we'll see lows around 65 degrees. For your Saturday, a 40% chance of, I'm sorry, that's Sunday. For Saturday, 85 degrees for the high uh, partly sunny skies, a chance of a shower late in the day, and then for Sunday, a 40% chance of showers comes our way with a high of 81 degrees. All right, 21 after, let's check the boating forecast. If you're thinking about it this weekend, it looks like uh, maybe today and tomorrow high pressure is going to continue offshore today and tonight, which is good, but a cold front moving in over the weekend, gradually moving offshore early next week. Uh, winds today southwest about 10 to 20 knots. That's going to create some pretty rocky waves on the sounds and rivers today. If you're going offshore, it looks like uh, the best time to do it might be tomorrow because uh, winds will go down to 5 to 10 uh, tomorrow, and there'll be a light chop out there, so not too bad. I would say today a little rocky, tomorrow better, and then Sunday 5 to 10 if you can avoid the showers out there. On Sunday, it might not be too bad. So not a bad boating weekend, one of the first good boating weekends of the year. And our boat uh, forecast brought to you by Park Boat Company and Manio Marine, your source for on-the-water fun in Eastern Carolina, located in Washington and Manio. They've got a great selection of new and used boats and personal watercraft. Eastern Carolina's volume dealers, Park Boat Company and Manio Marine. It's 22 after 8. This time out, and we're coming back. We're going to meet one of the big sponsors of today's show here in the convention center. And, uh, and then Linda McMahon is going to join us either in person or by phone. I'm still not quite sure yet. We're hoping she's still going to walk over from the Hilton. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Friday morning talk of the town live from the Greenville Convention Center just ahead of the beginning of the Greenville Business Expo and our Community Summit, which begins at 10. We'll be right back. 
Okay, welcome back. We're live on location this morning at the Greenville Convention Center and uh, the uh, Business Expo with the Chamber is about to take place. And uh, one of the big sponsors, are you guys the title sponsor? Yes, sir. The title sponsor again this year, I think you've done this every year over the years, is a Sudden Link. And uh, my friend Spencer Walston, who is the new uh, regional director for Sudden Link, is here with me, and it's great to see you. How you doing? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. Thank and you. And you're Henry. new in your job. I am. I yeah. am uh, one one week in. Yeah, good for uh, you. Good for yeah. you. Had lunch with Spencer earlier this week and got to know him a little bit. Uh, Sudden Link has been through some changes uh, in the last couple of years. You guys were sold about a year ago, and there have been some changes in the company and some reorganization. And you're part of that, right? You're yes, gonna, sir. You're going to be the new face of Sudden Link. I, I, I'm going to try my best. So uh, <laughs> no, we, we we've grown rapidly in the past year and a half. Uh, we, we've had a lot of changes for the good, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of uh, te- technological changes that, that really have helped us grow where when we were formerly Suddenlink as a smaller company, some things that we would have n- never been able to accomplish um, without being barred out, bought out by a larger company. Uh, but with that, you know, uh, anytime you have a lot of change in a short period of time, there, there are some heartaches. And uh, that, that's really, we, we realize as a, as a whole that we have dropped the ball at times um, in the community. And uh, we're, we're here to really just repair that image. We, we, you know, this is home to me. I, I, I live here, I work here, and uh, you know, instead of having you know, one corporate position that, that really runs the entire region as a whole, we're, we're looking to put the emphasis back on the community and uh, get that small town cable company feel, but with all the you know, great advancements that we've made with Altice. Uh, so no, I, I, I'm here and uh, you know, my team really just to repair the image and uh, you know, get back out in the community because uh, you know, it, it is something that we're passionate about and uh, we're, we're not going to be successful without having the community buy-in. You guys uh, have meant so much to this community over the years. Uh, you go back to the Phil Oshlager days yep. and, uh, and, uh, and Jared. J- Jared was yeah. here. Uh, great, great people. I'm glad to see you're in this position. And I'm glad that the company recognizes that you know, uh, being a, uh, th- this, kind, this kind of a community right here uh, functions off of uh, people working together and being part of what's happening. We're, we're only going to go as far as the community allows us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, without, without the community buy-in, uh, that, that is, where, you know, where we will fail as a company. Yeah. Uh, we, we need the company, you know, and uh, we, we hope you guys need us also. Well, I think I need you. <laughs> I, think, I think I got everything. Uh, you run everything in my house and at my yep. office, so I think I need you. What are you guys going to be talking about here today? Uh, you, uh, uh, internet, uh, cable, yep, so, so, um, we, phone we, service, we've got, everything. We've got two booths. Please come by and come see us. Um, you know, we've got John Autry, who's our head of commercial services. Um, you know, we, we actually, I, I believe, you know, we we're already working with a lot of the businesses here. So if you do not have uh, Sudden Link for your, for your cable, internet, and phone needs, please stop by and see John. Uh, we've also got Bud Garner, who's um, head of our media team. Our media team was actually, uh, we, we're creating our own brand within itself. Um, A4 is going to be our new uh, media side of the house. Uh, so please stop by and see Bud if uh, you're looking for any of your marketing needs. And uh, also, we'll have our residential piece. So we've got some, so, uh, a, f- a few of our direct sales reps here. Uh, so these are, our, are the residential guys that go to your house on a daily basis. Uh, come to awesome. see if they can help you out. Spencer Walston from Suddenlink. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Thank Great you, to see you. And by the way, we should say that uh, Suddenlink has just signed on, is going to be one of our sponsors of the concert on the Common, which is coming up on Wednesday. Thank you for that. We're excited yes, about that. We need to get you down there to say hello to the folks. And, you know, as, as, I didn't mention this to you. As part of the sponsorship, you get to sing with Craig Willard. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there. We can't wait. You need wait. to practice your I Love Beach music. and uh, that I've got of... a lot of practice in the next week. So. <laughs> All right, Spencer. Thank awesome. you, man. Thanks, Henry. Good to see you. It's 830. We are live at the Greenville Convention Center. We are waiting to find out whether she's going to show up live or on the phone. Linda McMahon is going to be with us here in a minute. And uh, we're hoping Linda's next door in the Hilton getting ready for tonight's big uh, event with the um, – a graduation commencement and those kind of things, McGee. So it's very exciting to see whether she shows up or not. It is. I hope she does. <laughs> <laughs> we are live this morning, and, of course, the Business Expo begins in 30 minutes at 9 o'clock, and then we will be uh, on the uh, air back here on 103.7 at 10 o'clock with our Greenville Community Summit again this morning, and we're going to be talking about all the issues surrounding Greenville. While we're waiting for Linda McMahon, let's take a break, and we'll come back. We're live at the Convention Center on uh, 103.7 and 94.1. It's Talk of the Town Friday. Be right back. Okay, welcome back. We're live on Talk of the Town this morning. We are at the Greenville Convention Center. It's 834. Nice to have everybody here. The uh, Greenville Business Expo begins in uh, just uh, 26 minutes. 
And we've got uh, about 110 exhibitors here in the convention center. And then, of course, at 10 o'clock this morning, we start with our Greenville Community Summit. Huge weekend in Greenville because of all going on, including commencement. And uh, we are excited about the fact that Linda McMahon, one of our great pirates, has come back to Greenville to be part of the uh, festivities this weekend. She's going to be the keynote speaker tonight at the commencement, 7 o'clock inside the football stadium. Uh, of course, uh, Linda McMahon is uh, the administrator and uh, appointed by Donald Trump to serve as the administrator of the Small Business Administration. It is Small Business Administration Week, Small Business Week across the uh, country. She's been rolling around in a, in a uh, bus all week, and she's actually here in Greenville now, and we're excited to have her. Uh, Linda McMahon, thank you very much uh, for being with us this morning. It's great to have you back in Greenville. Thank you, Henry. It's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to commencement tonight. Uh, this is my very first commencement address, so it'll be fun to do it at my alma mater. Uh, how, what do you what What do you remember about your ECU days, Linda? Can you Can you reminisce a little bit? I know you grew up in New Bern. Uh, tell us about your East Carolina days. Things were a little different in Greenville back then. Yeah, when I rolled into campus last night, I thought, well, I would never, ever have recognized uh, East Carolina University um, had, had I not known this is where I was coming. Uh, it's incredibly grown and changed. Wow. I don't know what the enrollment is uh, today compared to where I was, but I bet it was at, I bet it's at least doubled. Uh, but, but my days in East Carolina were jam-packed. Vince and I had gotten married right after I graduated from high school. Uh, he was already here. So I was taking uh, course overloads uh, every quarter and going through the summers to catch up with him so we could graduate together, which we did. So there wasn't a whole lot of grass growing under me while we were here. <laughs> That's great. By the way, I think you might be surprised that the uh, that, that the number of students is probably more than triple since you were here. I came here at 71. I think there were 9,500 students and this year, I think we cracked 30,000 for the first time. So the campus has grown incredibly, but it's been uh, it's been good growth. Uh, let's talk about your let's talk about your role as the administrator of the Small Business Administration. We're excited, of course, about the fact that uh, East Carolina has one of the top business schools in the country, one of the best online MBA programs uh, and biggest in the entire country. And uh, I know you'll probably talk about that some in your commencement speech tonight, but. A small business administration, um, a small business week this week. You've been, I know you uh, with the uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest yesterday, and uh, and you've been traveling around the country. So uh, talk about some of the things you've been involved with this week as part of Small Business Week. Well, I'll tell you, it's really an honor to have been um, appointed to this position by President uh, Trump. Uh, it's an honor to serve in his cabinet, and I have uh, been traveling pretty much down the southeast coast, well, up the southeast coast this week to celebrate a National Small Business Week. Um, the president uh, did proclaim that last uh, Friday, and uh, we had our launch in Washington on Sunday with our gala and some awards, and on Monday we honored all of the National Small Business winners from each state and two U.S. territories, as well as naming the Small Business Person of the Year. So. Um, it's really a way that we uh, shine a light and highlight our almost 30 million small businesses in, in the country. And, and, Henry, I know that you are clearly aware that small businesses really are the backbone of our economy. Uh, and if we can continue to help them grow and create jobs, then our, our economy is going to continue to grow and be strong. So I left Washington on Monday night and flew to Jacksonville, Florida, um, got on a bus, Tuesday morning, came up to Savannah, then Columbia, South Carolina. Yesterday, Charlotte, Raleigh, and wound up in Greenville last night and rolled into town with uh, bands playing and kids having a great time. Looking forward to tonight. Well, I know everybody's excited about you uh, being the commencement speaker, and we really appreciate you uh, doing that, Linda. Again, if you're just joining us, this is Linda McMahon. Uh, the administrator of the Small Business Administration. You know, uh, we talk about small businesses. We've got like 110 here in the convention center. Our, our show here will kick off in about uh, 21 minutes. It's open to the public, and uh, this is the backbone of the Greenville economy right here, so this is kind of exciting. Uh, but, you know, uh, one of my favorite things in politics in the last few years was, i got to tell you this, was when you ran for Senate 
in the state of Connecticut a few years ago against Richard Blumenthal, and uh, and and you, and you, the two of you were asked, "How do you create a job?" And it, it was kind of a, one of those uh, aha moments that kind of made you famous. You were already famous, but you made were made more famous by your answer to that question. Why? <laughs> While he was talking about all the things that you had to do from government to create a job, it was clear that you really got that and you understand how it really, what it really does take to, to create a job. Well, you know, it's so interesting because unfortunately, a lot of the rules uh, that are promulgated and passed and regulations in Washington are done by people who have never been in business. And so they, never, they don't appreciate, you know, what it takes the risk that it takes to start and grow a business. And I think that's one reason, well, that's what President-elect uh, Trump told me at the time as to why he wanted me to take on this position because I had actually built a business and knew the ups and downs, the good times and the bad times. And he said he wanted somebody who'd actually been in the business world. So um, he's got that in me, and that's why I enjoy going around and meeting and talking to different businesses and hearing what their issues are so I can advocate on their behalf in Washington. Well, let me tell you, uh, from all the pirates here in the Pirate Nation, we are proud of you, and we are excited about you being in Greenville. We want to see more of you in Greenville. You and Vince need to come down and, uh, and come to a football game. You know, I think we're playing some team that wears baby blue in September. Maybe you guys can come for that. <laughs> well, that would be a lot of fun. But today I'm going to wind up by saying, go Pirates. Yeah. Thank you a lot, and good luck with your commencement speech tonight, Linda. Thank you for being on with us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Linda McMahon, uh, the uh, administrator of the Trump administration, appointed by Donald Trump as the Small Business Administration Administrator. And uh, she is here in Greenville getting ready for the commencement speech tonight uh, on campus at the convention center. Uh, actually, at the uh, football stadium. We're in the convention center. And that's where we're going to be for the next few hours. Uh, it is 19 in front of uh, 9 o'clock now. At uh, 9 o'clock, we'll take a break here, but we'll be back on the air right at the top of the hour at 10 o'clock with our Greenville Community Summit. And uh, the uh, 9 o'clock is when the doors open for the Business Expo here. So come on out, be a part of it. And we are excited about uh, having uh, all these businesses here. We see some folks already sitting at their booths ready to go. The Poly Pilot team is ready. Morning, guys. And uh, so we want everybody to come out and be a part of uh, a great day here at the Convention Center. We'll talk more about it, and we'll give you the lineup of the uh, panel discussions for the summit starting at 10 o'clock right after this. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back. It is uh, Talk of the Town on location this morning. We are live at the uh, Greenville Convention Center, and uh, the uh, Chamber of Business Expo is getting ready to start. McGee? The uh, exhibitors are uh, getting in place here. This is very exciting stuff. Go yeah, on. they are. Over 120 exhibitors here today. And I wanted to mention, too, if you're a job seeker, you can come out today. They're, and there are certain vendors, businesses, participating in the Go Local Career Fair. So if you're looking for uh, a potential new job, you can come out and talk with them. And also the North Carolina Mobile Works Unit is also on site out front, uh, which is really cool to check out. So if you're a job seeker in the area, come by. We'll let you know how to find out more information about that when you walk in. You know, we hadn't even mentioned that. I'm glad you brought that up. It is a job fair on top of being kind of a business expo, which is kind of neat. Uh, let me say uh, a couple of things. Uh, we mentioned the, uh, the Greenville Community Summit will start at 10 this morning, and I want to get into that in a minute. But I also want to mention that we're now just days away from the first ever concert on the Common. We have not had a concert, a midweek uh, after work uh, get together for business people. This is kind of an after work party for everybody. And uh, the folks of the, the city of Greenville and Uptown Greenville Association, of course, the, uh, the uh, umbrella markets are going on now on Wednesdays. Coming this coming Wednesday at 5.30, it is the Concert on the Common with uh, the Embers featuring Craig Woolard. And we're very excited to have uh, some of the sponsors of the Concert on the Common uh, here today, the Polly Pilot State Farm people are going to be uh, sponsors. Thanks to Polly and her folks for sponsoring that. We're expecting Ben to get on stage and sing with Craig Willard. Are you ready? To, can you do that? I, I love beach music. That's what you got. You got to. Did you think Ben could do that? Ben, you're better than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, no, Craig's going to call you up, so you got to be down there Wednesday afternoon. 
Uh, also, uh, thanks to Greenville Toyota. Uh, of course, all this takes place at the Greenville Toyota Amphitheater at 5.30 on Wednesday. Thanks to Vidant Health. Thanks to Keller Williams uh, Points East. Uh, and uh, thanks to Bojangles. And by the way, listen to 107.9 this week. You got a chance to win a Bojangles tailgate party for the uh, concert on the Common. You're going to get a little extra treatment if you win. Yeah, that. how about that? And also thanks to Suddenlink. We just had Spencer on this morning from Suddenlink. They're one of the sponsors of the concert on the Common. It's coming up on Wednesday, 530 on the Greenville Town Common. So uh, get out there. And we got a banner right over here promoting the concert on the Common, which is cool. We're very excited about it. Uh, Eight forty nine, and now, it's free. It is free, <laughs> and there will be adult beverages. I understand. Can't be the uh, coastal beverage people will be there. The Uptown Brewing Company will be uh, people will be there. So there'll be Miller Lights. There'll be wine. There will be uh, there will be some uh, craft brews, including the Billy Beer. Have you had the Billy Beer? Haven't had the Billy Beer yet. I haven't had that either, but I hear it's pretty good. Heard a lot I'm about not, it I don't though. Do craft beer much, but I might try one of the Billy Beers. You should while I'm listening to Craig Willard sing. So come on out for that. All right, let's check a few sports headlines. It's a big weekend for the Pirates as they have uh, Tulane in New Orleans this weekend, and they need to get back on track after getting smashed last weekend. Here's McGee. Yeah, they do, and Chris Holbrook could get the start tonight, or should get the start tonight for ECU when they take on Tulane in game one of a three-game American Athletic Conference tilt. That game is set for 7.30, 3 o'clock first pitch for Saturday's game two, and 1 o'clock first pitch for Sunday's series finale. The Pirates right now uh, certainly could uh, use a sweep in that series. Uh, they're 8-7 and seven in league play. Tulane is 7-8 and eight on the season. John Peterson with a 665 after round one of the Wells Fargo Championship. He has a two-shot lead right now going into round two. Tiger Woods with a even par round 71. Phil Mickelson one over 71. And also uh, Matt Ryan on Thursday becoming the NFL's first $100 million man signing a five-year contract wow. extension with the Falcons that could be worth as much as $150 million. How about them apples? How about them apples? That's a, That's a lot good, of apples. Look at what right Tom there. Brady has to say about that. Uh, exactly. Uh, he, I think he has to say five Super Bowl rings. That's what I have to say about but it. But you know what? That's not $150 million. No. No, it's not. But <laughs> You're, That's a great point. I mean, really? Yeah. Tom Brady's making all sorts. He's not a real happy guy in New, or- in New England right now. He's, he's been very – he's been a little bit of a malcontent. He has a lot more endorsements, though, than Matt Ryan does. Yeah. He's probably getting close to that. Yeah, the latest article on him was is that he f- – when he was asked directly whether or not he's appreciated uh, by management and the head coach at Patriots, he pleaded the fifth. Yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't <laughs> answer it. I I'm like it. going, really? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, sports update brought to you by Strawberries on 903. What a great weekend to go pick strawberries, everybody. Oh, yeah. The uh, strawberries are out. Strawberries are very abundant. They're nice and juicy. It's a great crop this year. Come on out to Strawberries on 903. They're going to be open today from 8 to 6. They're open tomorrow on Saturday from 8 to 4. And Sunday they'll be open from 1 to 5. You can pick them yourself or get them already cartoned up. And, of course, they've also got uh, all sorts of other great seasonal produce. Get some of those asparagus. I'm going out there before the weekend's over. I still hadn't made it out there yet. I always do, though. I usually take my grandkids out there and pick the strawberries, which is one of the highlights of the year. It's, it's one of the most fun things we do. Uh, tomatoes, cabbage, broccoli, lettuce. They've even got homemade ice cream, and it'll be a great weekend for homemade ice cream at Strawberries on 903. It's a working farm. You can take the kids out see the farm animals. A lot of fun. Mike and Steve, my buddies, are always out there hanging out to chat with you, answer any questions. Get out to Strawberries on 903 this weekend. Again, you just turn away from Winterville on 903 off of Memorial on Highway 11 there. Just turn right on to 903. You go about four miles out in the country to the Rinston uh, community, and uh, you'll see Strawberries on 903 about four miles south of Winterville. Uh, again, uh, Saturday hours are, are 8 to 4, Sunday 1 to 5. They're open Monday to Friday 8 to 6 at Strawberries on 903. All right. Michael, we just got one more break left, so we got a couple of minutes left. Let me reiterate a couple of things. The Greenville Community Summit will begin at 10 this morning here in the convention center, and uh, the 10 o'clock panel is going to be terrific because uh, the new city manager, Ann Wall, is making her first public appearance this morning. That will be in just a little bit over an hour. Uh, also, Tom Taft is uh, scheduled to be with us. Tom, of course, is one of the developers 
of uh, Uptown Greenville, some of the student housing that's going on in Uptown Greenville, Tony Cannon from Greenville Utilities, and uh, Bill Kincannon from uh, the Department of Transportation is going to be here. Mr. Kincannon is going to give us an update on all these projects that are going on uh, in Greenville with the highways. How, when is the 10th Street Connector now called the, uh, I guess it's been officially called, named the uh, Leo Jenkins Boulevard, hasn't it? Leo Jenkins, when will when that will That will be complete open? soon, very soon. Uh, when will the Southwest by when we're going to be driving on the Southwest bypass and uh, how about that uh, controversial expansion of Evans Street that they finally got worked out so a lot to talk to about this morning uh, with Ken Cannon and the folks in the uh, Greenville economy um, and the 11 to 12 hour this morning we're going to talk about public safety and what's happening in Greenville Rose Glover is uh, the uh, mayor pro tem of Greenville is going to be here uh, Captain Chris Ivey from GPD is going to be here, one of the Greenville uh, lieutenants. Uh, well, not lieutenants, but captain, one of the top folks in the uh, police department. Caroline Webb from the DA's office, who has just yesterday won a huge case in that uh, stabbing case. I think the guy got something like 30 years. 31 or years. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we should, we'll get, to, get her to talk about that and other things going on uh, in the community with the regard to uh, opioid problems and things like that. Uh, Sheriff Neil Elks will also be here. This will kind of be his swan song. He's not running again. He's retiring this year. So I'm glad Neil was able to be with us today. At 12 o'clock today, we're going to have our panel discussion on making Greenville all it can be. Mayor P.J. Murphy, uh, me, uh, P.J. Conley will be here, along with uh, Bianca Schoenemann from the Uptown Greenville Association, Brian Floyd from Violet Medical Center, and uh, Michael Overton will also be part of that group discussion as one of the top uh, commercial real estate guys in eastern North Carolina. He can kind of give us an update on where we're heading. And thanks to all of our sponsors, including Michael and the Overton Group, uh, and uh, Greenville Utilities, John Gavigan from Nationwide Insurance, just uh, picked up a uh, new agency here in Greenville, been a longtime Nationwide agent in Newburn. Now John, uh, who grew up with my son Hank, is... Uh, now uh, got a great uh, nationwide agency here in Greenville, and also Pizza Inn. Those are our sponsors for the Greenville Community Summit, which will start in one hour and five minutes. Any closing comments, gentlemen? Anything? Any big plans for the weekend? What you doing, Gent? Oh, God, there's so much to choose from. You got the barbecue fest. You got the air show. <laughs> yeah. You've got sports. You got. I don't know. Up. There's just everything's going on. Yeah, you guys will be uh, – ITN will be down at the barbecue festival. Yeah, there and the air show. We're, we're kind of we got the out. barbecue uh, festival event coming up in Aiden next week. Yeah, we'll be there too. Yeah, we're, we're part of that as well. Yeah, a uh, lot going on this weekend. McGee? Come out today. Enjoy the, uh, the summit. If you don't have a ticket, you can buy a ticket for the expo today. Five bucks at the door. Come out. You can ask questions too. So it's a great day that you can meet some new businesses, <clears throat> excuse me, network and hear the summit at the same time. It is going to be a great day at the Greenville Convention Center. Come on out, folks. It's open to the public in four minutes. They'll open the front doors, and you can come be a part of this uh, Greenville Business Expo and Greenville Community Summit, which will begin at 10. All right, that is it. Thanks to Michael and uh, Daniel and Thomas and Coach Carr back at Mission Control. Thank you, guys. As always, Michael, you got it set up flawless. I sit down. I walk in. I sit down. You guys have been out here for hours working to get us on the air. We appreciate that. Thanks for all you do. And uh, on uh, getting, us, getting us on all these remote broadcasts, they always go off uh, flawlessly. Uh, thanks to Leo and the chamber staff here for having us out. And congrats to the graduates today, too. Congratulations to all the great. Thanks to Linda McMahon for being with us. See you guys next week. Thanks, Andrew. Everybody have a great weekend.